okay welcome to my youtube channel and this is the third video of the lecture series that we have been doing in this video we will be looking at free expansion so in the first two videos we did some problems of uh, molar specific heat and entropy calculation but uh, this video will be a bit different today we will learn about the theory of free expansion first and then we'll do some problems this is a very important topic so that's why i decided to do the theory first so let me write joule expansion or we expansion so let us first define what free expansion is so this is an ever thermodynamic process so here a mm, uh, volume of gas is kept in one side of a thermally isolated container and the other side of the container is in vacuum so let me draw the diagram first. So let this be the container. Which has insulating walls. That means there will be no heat exchange with the outside. So it will have insulating walls and there will be one partition uh, which I have done, drawn in the red color and in one of the partitions uh, the partition will divide the container in two halves and in one of them there will be a gas and the other one will be vacuum so let me just write what I have defined so a volume of gas is kept in one side side of a thermally isolated container where the other part is vacuum so now the partition will be 
removed and as an effect the gas will fill up the whole container so this process is called a free expansion And uh, as I have written in the title, this is also known as Joule Expansion. Joule Expansion. So, naturally, the question arises why are we interested in this? So, why are you interested in free expansion? Now, to understand this, we need to see what happens to the system during this process. So, we need to understand what happens To the system okay so let me first uh, draw the, draw and define the system properly so in the initial stage initial state let me draw the system for that there was one partition and the gas was confined to one side of this container and let us assume that here the pressure of the gas was pi i for initial the volume was vi and the temperature was ti and let us also assume that the rest of the volume where there were which was vacuum that was vo so what will happen to the final stage Now, as we have uh, said earlier, in the final stage, uh, as we have removed the partition here, the gas will fill up the whole volume. So, the gas will now fill the whole volume so again let me draw for this case also
so so the gas will be in the full volume of the container as we have removed the partition here so let us assume again that final pressure will be pf final volume will be vf and final temperature will be tf now from these two diagrams we can easily see that vf will be nothing but pi plus vo because initially the volume was vi and the rest of the volume was v0 and as we have removed the partition the gas is not filling the whole chamber so vi plus v0 will be the final volume okay now a few things to note here so let me write it in a different color so here the whole container is the system also as the container is thermally isolated so there will be no exchange of heat which implies that dq is zero for free expansion now here when we are removing the partition the gas is expanding into vacuum so it is not doing any external work actually so as the gas is expanding into vacuum so it is not doing any work so which implies that dw which is the work done will also be zero in this case so now if we remember the first law of thermodynamics it states that dq is equal to du plus dw where uh, dq is the heat exchanged du is the change in internal energy and dw is the work done now we have established that for this process dq is zero and dw is also zero which implies that du is also equal to zero So, what does that mean? Okay, so let us for the moment assume that 
the gas is ideal gas and as we know for ideal gas u internal energy is only dependent on the temperature so u is only a function of t which means du equal to 0 will imply that dt is also 0 or t is constant. So, if the gas is ideal gas, then Ti will be equal to Tf and this expansion will be isothermal isothermal meaning that the temperature is not changing so here comes the importance of p expansion as we know for isothermal process we know how to calculate change in thermodynamic quantities So, we can apply that knowledge here and uh, we will be also able to tell uh, what will be the change in different thermodynamic quantities for an uh, irreversible process also. So, that is why uh, we are interested in free expansion. So, one of the quantities that can be easily calculated is the change in entropy. change in entropy which is given by let us say delta s and this is equal to dq reversibly transferred times t uh, sorry divided by t. So now uh, for this isothermal process t is constant so it will be very easy to calculate the change in internal energy. Here dq ref is heat exchanged in a reversible way. Okay, so now we have understood the importance of the expansion and in the exams also you will find that uh, they will ask you to calculate the change in entropy so this formula will be important and we will do exercise about it so now let us do some different thing we will try to answer another question what which is what is the difference between an 
isothermal expansion and a free expansion. So, difference between isothermal expansion and free expansion. As we have looked in the previous section also, in both the cases there is no temperature change. So, it is important to understand the difference between them. So, it will be very beneficial for us to do this and it will also help us in solving the problems. Okay. So, I will first go and describe isothermal expansion. So, the main point here is P is constant which implies that dt is 0 and that in turn implies that for ideal gas du is also 0. So, this happens when the system is in contact with a heat preserver and the system changes so slowly that it can be treated to be in equilibrium at all time. At all time. So, this is a quasi equilibrium process and also this is reversible process. And also, as there is a heat reservoir involved, the heat exchanged dQ will not be equal to 0. So, heat will be exchanged between the system and the reservoir.
okay so i actually thought that uh, this uh, amount of page will be sufficient for me to finish this up so i earlier didn't end here but uh, i think we'll need some more page so yeah okay so now we will calculate change in entropy so first for isothermal expansion we know that change in entropy of the system is given by dq the heat exchanged reversibly divided by the temperature and similarly the change in entropy of the outside which is denoted by delta s underscore o will be given by minus dq reversible over t so this is this has a minus sign because uh, if the outside is supplying energy then the system will be receiving energy and vice versa so now we know that from ideal gas equation we know that PV equal to nRT and so when T is constant as in the case of isothermal expansion we have PI VI equal to PF VF and again from first law we have dq reversibly given is equal to dw as du is equal to zero needless to say that we are looking at ideal gas here we are also using the ideal gas equation so d equal to zero as dt is zero so dq reversible will be pdv so delta s for system will be integration from initial to final stage pdv over t now p can be written as nrt over v this is coming from the ideal gas equation from this equation this part is coming and if we proceed with the integration we will see nrt over t v dv integration is from initial to final stage and this will be now here t and t will cancel out so this will be in our integration from initial to final stage dv over v which is in our ln vf minus ln v 
pi. So we can simplify this a bit and we can write that delta S S is n r ln p f over p i. So let me box out this result. Yeah. And also we can use this equation here which is nothing but the Boyle's law P i V i equal to P f V f Boyle's law and we can use this to write delta S s equal to n r ln P i over Pf. So let me box this out also. Sorry. Okay. So what will be the total entropy change of the universe? that will be delta s equal to delta s s plus delta s 0 which will be nothing but 0. So as isothermal expansion is a reversible process the change in entropy of the universe will be 0. Okay. So, this was for isothermal expansion. And now we will look at free expansion. This was one. expansion so here we will utilize the fact that entropy is a state function which means that the change in entropy will be only dependent on the initial and final stage. It will not be dependent on the path it takes to go to the final stage from the initial stage. So we can say delta S is dependent on the initial and final stage, not the path which the system takes to go from the initial to final state. So what does that mean? It means that for free expansion also the change in entropy for the system can be obtained 
from the formula that we derived for isothermal case because again the value of delta s will be dependent only on the initial and final state not the path so it doesn't matter if it reaches the path in a reversible way or in a irreversible way the change in entropy will be same in both the cases so let me box out this result so now you might wonder then what is the difference between p expansion and uh, isothermal expansion but as we have discussed the p expansion is a irreversible process and also they are dq is zero so no heat exchanged between system and surroundings so delta s outside will be zero so this is the difference between pre-expansion and isothermal expansion equal zero so what will be the change in entropy of the universe in this case that will be delta s s plus delta s zero which means it will be nr ln pf over vi so this will be greater than zero as this is an expansion and vf is greater than vi so delta s is greater than zero as it is intended to be for an irreversible process and one thing to note here is that here for the okay, here for calculating the change in entropy of the system we cannot use the formula dq reversible over t although here t is constant because here the heat transfer is zero so that would imply that the entropy change is zero but this formula here it will not apply because this is only for reversible processes only for reversible processes so okay so in today's video we learned about free expansion why it is important and its differences with the uh, thermal expansion which is a reversible process and pre expansion is a irreversible process and we also learned how to calculate the change in entropy of the system and also of the surrounding in both the cases and uh, i think the time for today's video is already up so in the next video we will solve 
problems which require these concepts okay so bye for today